Ladies and gentlemen, F1 Manager 2022 with you at last. Are we looking forward to it? Absolutely. We're going to be taking over Aston Martin Tuesdays and Thursdays on the YouTube channel. Make sure you watch this series. It's going to be an absolute belter. Let's get stuck into it. Formula One, a sport that spans hearts, minds and nations, where the 20 best drivers in the world come together to take on some of the world's most historic circuits. And that legacy continues today. The 2021 championship was thrilling from start to finish, and 2022 is set to be even better. New regulations will usher in an age of pioneering changes. New driving talent alongside returning champions will be dueling it out to the bitter end. The pressure will be on the team principals in the upcoming season as they manage their drivers, their cars, and the whole team to push to victory. This is not a challenge for the faint-hearted. This is Formula One. So guys, as we know from the start, we've been looking at going for Aston Martin. They're the team, as you probably guessed from the thumbnail, that we're going to be taking over. Let's have a little listen at what Aston Martin are all about. 2021 was Aston Martin's first full season in Formula One. They roared onto the scene with Sebastian Vettel, the legendary four-time world champion, in one of those coveted driving seats. Despite some teething problems in testing, Aston Martin gave a solid showing and finished the season in seventh place overall. Heading into 2022 with Lance Stroll and Vettel behind the wheel, Aston Martin had the potential to become regular podium contenders, but it's going to take strong leadership and shrewd investment to get them there. So we're gonna try and keep these as short and snappy videos as we possibly can. First of all, board expectations. They want us to finish 8th or above in the Constructors' Championship and long-term want us to be a points contender. Next up is the drivers. If you know about your F1, then you'll not recognise these two drivers. If not, let me fill you in. Sebastian Vettel, world champion in the past, experienced head, retiring at the end of this season in real life, 82 rated. Lance Stroll, young bug, 23 years old, Canadian. He's going to be the number two driver. I know a lot of creators have said, right, we don't want Lance Stroll. Everybody at this team is going to be given a chance to prove that they are worth it. Nico Hulkenberg, another one, reserve driver, 76, experienced veteran again. Good source of knowledge and will be valuable to us in this first season. Interestingly, all three drivers only on a 10 month or one year deal. That means at the end of this first season, we can change them and make wholesale changes then. But for the first season, we're sticking with these guys. And that theme follows through with the staff as well. They're all going to get a chance, but we have not got the best technical chief and we've certainly not got the best head of aerodynamics. In fact, we've got the worst on the grid in both of them. Andrew Green, 56 year old on a one year deal, head of aerodynamics. Ian Craig is also on a four year deal. So we're going to have to get rid of this man or develop him. But he is that low in, co in comparison to some of the other head of aerodynamics on the grid. We're going to have to make a change at some point and buy him out of his contract. Race engineers, Chris Cronin and Ben Mitchell, which up with these lads? These are two good guys and will benefit us both in terms of team and our drivers. Definitely worth keeping hold of and good job as well because they're both on decent length contracts. So there's going to be no expense in getting rid of these guys because we're going to keep them both. Next up is the finances. Now these are very important as we know we've got a cost cap but we have got healthy projections for the next 12 months and that means we can afford to invest in some facilities and some upgrades around the place to make us a better team. And a healthy part of that projection is the sponsorships. Now the sponsorships in this game, we have got a lot of commitments that we've got to make. These are already pre-assigned before we've taken over. Next year we'll be able to negotiate our own sponsorship obligations. But as you can see, we've got merchandising that we've got to get sorted out. We've got race day factory events and these have negative impact on the team as well. Because car parts manufacturing, as we can see on this, is paused on the day of the race session when these factory events are going on. We've got other factory events, driver appearances, and also race day weekend driver appearances as well. So these are commitments that we've got to do throughout the season. Bear that in mind, because we've got to manage them. And now if we look at the facilities, now we've got car development facilities, staff facilities and operations for facilities, a lot to delve into and at the moment most of them are pretty busy. We've got a level 2 factory, a level 2 design centre, one in a wind tunnel, CFD simulator, suspension simulator is pretty good and the car park test centre is really good, that's going to be good for quality assurance definitely. If we have a look at the staff facilities, the team hub, scouting department and race simulator are all pretty basic as well and also the operations facilities. We've got a decent boardroom, so there's some whiskey knocking about in there. Hospitality area, weather center. We've got some helipad. I've seen some other creators start with no helipad. We've got a level two helipad. 
around. We might be able to land two helicopters on there. A memorabilia room, we're probably not going to get many trophies this season, so I'm not too worried about that. And a tour centre, we've also got one of them as well. So facilities-wise, not looking too bad. We're not going to make any changes straight off the bat. We'll wait until we've been in Bahrain and see what we can do after that. And our first big decision as team principal in the inbox is whether to have a season kickoff party that the staff want to have. They want to bring everyone together to celebrate the team, but they need a budget and they need $10,000. So there's some decent beer knocking about at this party. I think it would be good for team morale to get introduce myself, but also get that team bond and camaraderie going. So absolutely, we're approving the party request. And in addition to that, we've now had the pre-season testing results and it makes for pretty grim reading for our Aston Martin team. 17th in top speed, 17th in acceleration, cornering with vanity tall. DRS were not brilliant either. With 17th to 19th in everything, we have got a really poor car that we've got to develop. But hopefully with the experience that we've got in Sebastian Vettel, the enthusiasm of Lance Stroll and some decent race engineers, we can try and improve it the best we can. Now let's get some race prep sorted out. We know race preparation is absolutely key. Now, the Bahrain circuit, we're looking at a pretty dry weekend. We don't expect any rain. There's a historic chance of a safety car. is 100%. We reckon there may be a safety car. First race here in 2004. It's a belting-looking circuit under the lights in Bahrain. As we can see on the circuit, we've got some long straights, some high-speed corners, and some low-speed ones as well. I wish I could tell you that any of that suited our car, but it really doesn't. In addition to the race preparation, we've also got performance targets set by sponsors. And incentives if we reach and we can give guarantees we're not giving any guarantees this weekend they want us to reach q3 there's an incentive for that an incentive for fastest lap we aren't going to get any of that and as we can see the guarantees i don't even fancy us to reach q2 so we're making no guarantees this weekend as drivers are ready it's car builds ready let's get stuck into bahrain land footprint but it's showing its big spirit right now in the grandstands either way it's time for another fantastic weekend of grand prix racing the Bahrain International Circuit is a challenging track and the cars routinely have to brake from high gear to low to take the narrow turns. With the need for downhill braking, the risk of locking up is one drivers will need to manage. It's all about focus and balance to get victory here. We might still be early in the season, but that doesn't mean we can sit back and relax. Everything is up for grabs and nothing is certain at this stage. What will happen this weekend? Only time will tell. Right then, so as we can see, it was not the best practice session for us at all. Max Verstappen was quickest by just, o just over a tenth of a second, so good, good practice for Max Verstappen on the opening weekend of the season. But we were re languishing down in 18th and 19th position, beaten by Alexander Albon, but not by much, it must be said. So still some work to do, but if we beat Williams this weekend, I think that would be a massive result for us. So we've just got not got to be the worst team, so let's get stuck into qualifying. And following on from that, good news is track acclimatisation. Both our guys are very up to speed with the track. We know the track off by art. Car parts knowledge not bad either. And setup confidence isn't too bad. And performance bonus still looking all right. So hopefully we can try and push for getting into Q2. That would be ideal. Like I said, dry qualifying session. So let's start qualifying. So here we are then, Q1. Right, let's get everything sorted out. So both guys... After the radio checks, are oh, going to be going yeah, out clear. on soft tyres. I think we're going to get them out straight yeah, away. Then. And I think what we'll do is we'll get a better lap first. And there goes Sebastian Vettel. I think we'll just let that Mercedes go past. And then we will get Lance Stroll out as well. And I think we'll watch this first qualifying lap of our F1, 20, F1 Manager 2022 campaign. He's going to get them tyres nice and warm. Like I said, if we can somehow get through to Q2, that would be ideal. But look at the visuals on this as he warms them tyres up. I think what we'll do is we'll just fast forward it until he's starting his flying lap. So Mick Schumacher's first round, then Vettel, we've got Russell in between, our, in between our two guys, but Vettel, right, is just coming round at that final corner, so we will watch it from Sebastian Vettel on board. As he's, right, starting his lap now, 
down into the first corner. It's a tight right turn followed by a left. But takes it nice and nice and well. And then we've got a straight. Like I said, we haven't got the car really to be competing for any sort of the higher position. So it's really just to see how we get on here. But my word, doesn't this game look good and doesn't our car look good as well? And like I said, we don't really know what's what's good, what in. We'll have to we'll sort of take note after the sort of first round first round of laps, but so far, keep it on the track. Keep looking decent. So we're happy to let these tyres cool a bit. Copy. And that's interesting as well that the tyres are overheating slightly as well, so that's not going to benefit us in any way. Rears are hot. Yeah. And it looks like Lance is having the same sort of issues as well. So track temperature's 30 degrees. But we are out nice and early. We are coming up behind an Alpine on its warm-up lap. It's Sebastian Vettel. Coming up to the final corner, takes it nice, straight on the power towards the line. Now let's have a look. First time we're going to say in Q1, Sebastian Vettel, he's going to be four tenths off of Mick Schumacher. And a 133.2. Lance Stroll, he's just going to come across the line as well. 133.5. So two and a half tenths, nearly three tenths difference between the two guys. But not the end of the world at all. Right then, so after the first runs, Vettel's in 14th. Currently, he's in Q2. Stroll down in 17th, a little bit more work to do. So we're going to get going now. I think we're going to send Stroll out first. Get him out quite early. And then I think we're going to send Vettel. We're going to give Vettel a little bit longer. Stroll's gone quite early there, but I'm hoping track rubber's high, track grip, track grip is high as well. So let's see what Lance can do and then I think once he gets down to sort of three minutes and we see a couple of others coming out, that's when we'll get Vettel out. I'm keen to get Stroll out in, uh, in clear air as well, so that will be the other bit of thinking behind it. But we'll see. I'm not expecting Stroll to get to Q2, but we've got half a chance with Vettel. Sonoda, Gasly and Magnussen all struggling as well, so there is half a chance here. And as soon as it's sort of two and a half minutes, I think that's when we're going to send out Vettel. But I wanted to get Stroll out nice and early, see what we can do here. That's a little bit of work too, but not too much. He's only less than a tenth out of Q2. So I would expect maybe Sonoda and Gasly to improve a little bit, but we're going to get Sebastian Vettel out now. But Stroll's going to be the one we focus on for the time being. Because he's just starting his own lap, we're now waiting for Sebastian Vettel, our best chance of getting into Q2 here, to come out of the pit lane. Still waiting, still waiting. And he's out, right. We'll switch back to Stroll for the moment. Lance is just completing his warm-up lap. Like I say, he's got clean air. He's not going to get any traffic. That might, Vettel might suffer with that, but hopefully he's got the experience to just give his send that little bit of time. Little bit of clear air. He might even pick up a toe if we are lucky. But right, Lance Stroll starting his final qualifying lap. Did go out probably 30 seconds to a minute early, but he is in clear air. Let's see what he can do. Can he get out of that drop zone? We'll get the telemetry up at the bottom. That didn't look great, but let's see. As he powers down first DRS zone, right hander coming up. Again, not too bad. Let's have a look. Keep an eye on the timings at the bottom right. Green first sector from Lance Stroll. That could be enough to get him out of the bottom, out of the drop zone. Can he continue this good little, good little run he's having? It's looking tidy, Lance. It's looking tidy. 
lap again, halfway around cool. the lap, and his race engineer is yeah. asking about keeping the tyres cool, so that's something we've got to be very aware of. Maybe the, the soft tyre might not work for us in the race at all. If we are struggling over one lap, we may be struggling a lot in the race, so mediums is what I'm thinking of doing. But Lance Stroll, he has gone green in the middle sector as well. Coming up to the final corner after this straight, Lance Stroll, 40 seconds left in the session. Can it improve on his, on his last lap time? He's looking good for it. On the brakes, round the final corner. Now it's a straight sprint to the line. He's got a bit of traffic in front of him, but that's not going to bother him. Maybe he picks up a bit of a toe. But Lance Stroll goes 15. He's out of the drop zone as it stands, but everybody else has got to improve. But now we go to the man of the moment. Sebastian Vettel is on his final player of this qualifying session. Looks a bit more aggressive than strong. Looks a bit more in control of the car. Looks a little bit faster from where we're stood. Still looking decent. Still looking decent. If we can beat the two Williams, that's all we're looking to achieve. But if we can somehow sneak it into Q2, that would be ideal for us in his first qualifying session of F1 Manager 22 and our first as team principal, Aston Martin. Again, tyres too hot, but he's keeping it under control. Guan Yu Zhou's finished, Latif is gone. Good session. Latif is still not managed to get out of the drop zone. Gasly has. Gasly goes up to six, that pushes Stroll into the bottom five. It's now all on Vettel to see if we can get a Q2 appearance. Final couple of corners, one last corner coming up. Mick Schumacher's out of the drop zone. The no that we would expect to get out of it. On the brakes, he's gone yellow and yellow. He's not going to do it, Sebastian Vettel. It's going to be disappointing. You feel he could have done a little bit better. And doesn't improve on his original time. That is a bit of a blow for us, that it must be said. And Stroll's going to come in. So that will do it. Max Verstappen will start on Paul Charles Leclerc and then Carlos Sainz makes up the top three with Sergio Perez. It's Red Bull from Ferrari, Ferrari and Red Bull followed by the two Mercedes after. And that's the end of qualifying. And as we can see both drivers eliminated 17th and 18th on the grid. Bit of a signal. Bit of a signal. Drivers are strapping themselves in, ready for race day. Aston Martin were on target for qualifying. Now it's up to them to defy expectations for the race itself. Alpha Tauri did rather well in qualifying. Let's see if they can manage to achieve a strong start for the race itself. We've been having lovely clear weather, although there are a few clouds lurking. Hopefully they'll stay in check for the duration of the race. But which team has perfected the strategy that will see them prevail today? Here at the Bahrain Grand Prix. Right, so it's strategy time. Now, what we've done is we've split the strategy. We reckon Sebastian Vettel's got the better pace of the two. We've gauged that from qualifying and from practice sessions. So, Sebastian Vettel's going to be on the standard strategy. It's going to be a two-stop, soft to medium to soft. That's what we're going for. It's a bit more aggressive. What we're going to do with Lance Stroll is we're going to start him on the medium. He's a bit further back. Start him on the medium, one-stop it to hards. That's the plan. Let's see if it pays off. With the sky is mostly clear, tonight's race shouldn't hold any unpleasant surprises. And there's Sebastian Vettel. My word, the they're graphics on this game are ridiculous, the aren't they? So there's a lot of cars between them and the podium. There's Lance Stroll down the grid. They're in the back half of the pack, so they'll need to work hard if they want a podium finish. And we're just moments away now. And this is it, the Bahrain Grand Prix. And it slides out, and away we go. And we're underway on his first Grand Prix team principal. I'm absolutely buzzing for this. It's a good start for Vettel. Stroll a little bit left over. We expected that with that medium compound tire, but I'm hoping Vettel can make some inroads. Remember, Stroll has really got the sort of... Uh, We'll make these tyres last as much as we possibly can and then we'll work from there. I reckon we can beat the two Williams with Stroll on this alternate strategy but I'm hoping 
that Vettel can do a little bit more than that. I'm hoping he can possibly beat Mick Schumacher and maybe keep up with Ricardo. We've got a lot to manage early days in this one. But first lap, let's have a look at it from Sebastian's point of view. Look at that. He took that corner well. Right. Oh. Thought he might have fancied a little good then. Lance has really got to keep in that DRS, in the DRS. That's what Lance Stroll's got to do. If he keeps in the DRS, Vettel will pull him along. That's the idea. So we're going to keep an eye on the DRS usage of Stroll to see if we can get him to really push it. He might have to push for a couple of laps, but as soon as he's got that DRS, we're happy. But the other thing is to make sure that Sebastian keeps up with Mick Schumacher as well. Because he's nearly pulled out a second already on uh, on, on Seb. Obviously, he's mate, he's mentor. Seb's been a big, big influence on uh, on Mick Schumacher's career so far. And we're already losing a little bit of pace. And we are going to straight away... You can use energy. Use energy. You can use energy. We need to stay in DRS. And I'm also going to tell Lance Stroll to just be a little bit more aggressive early doors. We think we can lean on the tyres more. Yeah. And deploy DRS as well. I think the, the best idea is to try and keep him in DRS. Copy. Once we, stay in, once we stay in DRS range, then we'll get comfortable, then we'll start to look at conserving the tyres a little bit, especially Stroll and then mediums, I think that's necessary as well. But both are in mini RS deploy mode. Seb's keeping up better as you'd expect. He is on them soft compound tyres, and to be honest with you, as soon as we've done that, He's looking a little bit, a little bit more likely. Lance is struggling, really struggling to keep up with. But he, in fairness to Lance, he has broke the RS to Albon, who is on soft compound tyre. So, in his own little race, Lance's time is going to come a bit later on in this stint. Obviously, Seb's on his. Um, DRS enabled. Right, DRS. Seb's very much in range of keeping DRS. And we're hoping that we're going to get DRS with Lance, but I don't think we're going to manage it now. So we might as well get him to normal. And standard on board. Yeah, take it easy. Okay. So Seb's going to be his main one in this race, it's got to be said. We need Stroll really to just keep them Williams at bay. That's, that's his race. Seb's got a different race on. He can possibly look to make him roads into this first two. And we're just going to keep with Seb for the moment. Because he is very much on the back of Mick Schumacher. And Stroll's doing a fantastic job. Credit to him, we're not uh, really focusing on Stroll, but he's very much pulling a gap to the two Williams behind him. So Stroll doing a superb job, but Vettel's the man we're looking at at this moment in time. Mick Schumacher, he's still hanging on to that DRS of Ricardo, but Seb, he's definitely looking a bit more likely to overtake Mick. And this could be some battle. However, he is leaving Stroll for absolute dead here. But I think what we can do now is we'll switch to the map view and I think we'll just speed up a little bit. We'll keep an eye on what's going on. So Vettel still staying in that DRS range. That's all we're interested in, really. If he can stay in DRS, he's not using mass as a ERS either. Tire wear looking pretty okay, but standard. And Vettel could possibly... No, not quite go for a move. Vettel is catching Mick in a certain sector, you would suggest. If we just keep his eye on it here. He is quicker, you would suggest, through the... 
Well, the middle sector, Vettel, is far quicker than Mick Schumacher. He's so much quicker. Maybe there is an opportunity. There might be an opportunity for Seb. Let's go on board with him once again. As we're on lap seven now. But there is a point where he seems to catch Mick. And I reckon there's an opportunity down the uh, down the middle straight that we can possibly get him. Like I said, we've, we've very much left Lance now. Lance is uh, very much in his own race against the two Williams. I'm, unfortunately, it's not going to be a, a nice afternoon for uh, for our Lance at the bike. But if he's doing a job for the team, we're more than happy with that. And the fact that the uh, the fact that the two Williams can't seem to catch him on softs, they bodes very well for the rest of this race for him. However, Seb, down this uh, down the start finish line straight into the first corner. See, the other thing as well is Mick might get caught up fighting this uh, fighting the McLaren. So we've got that to bear in mind. And the old red shot is good as well. The, the, just all the the cameras and everything are so so good. Right. I think this is his best chance. Yellow flag. Virtual safety car deployed. And I'm not quite sure what's happened there. It's a collision. Virtual safety car. Okay. Okay. Is there an opportunity uh, to get a pit stop in? I think there possibly is. Maybe we've gone to the medium compound and we go medium, medium. No DRS. I think that's the best chance. I think that is the best chance. Wow. So Seb is coming in for a bit early pit stop. This is a bit of a risk. Aston Martin with a great play there. They've moved up a place. Strolls overtook you Hamilton. You're now. not going to see this many more times. So what's it's happened Lance there Stroll. then? Hamilton's obviously struggling. And Lance has just overtook him. So that's fine. That's really good. Right. Vettel is now on new medium tyres, so that's fine, but he should catch up to the back of the pipe. And we have gone a little bit more aggressive. Vettel's gonna catch up to the back of the pack, and we're gonna have some uh, we're gonna have some overtaking action now. As he's belting round. I think we might have played a blinder here. Yeah? We may have played a blinder. If he catches up with the guys. He's got a bit of catching up to do. And I don't think he's managed to catch him. He's not managed to catch him. But, in fairness, it's four seconds. Now, they've got to make a pit stop pretty soon, I would suggest. So, I think we've called that right. I think we've called that right. And he has got some fuel to use now, so let's push. You can stop lift and coast. Yeah, copy. Don't sound too upset, Sebastian. Let's see what happens. He should start to get that. Uh, he should start to get that gap down, which he is doing. We can see that straight away.
He's down to two seconds now, and they've got a 20 second pit stop, so he should be pretty clear of them. The other interesting one is Stroll on the back of Bottas. I think we can afford to push Lance a little bit as well. Although Lance is not really making any inroads. DRS is enabled, Lance. Safe fuel, safe fuel. Right, that's yep. all looking pretty good. So we'll continue with that. And Seb's going to be in DRS pretty shortly of Latifa. And I think we'll now switch back to that. Looks like Aston Martin. And here's the replay. A race position. Let's take a closer look. Yeah, DRS in the medium side. Them Sebastian softs are starting to fade now for Williams. There is an argument that we possibly could have gone on towards, but I felt we might as well use the VSC while we got the chance. But that is not bad at all. And I'm sure he's not going to be long on the back. They're enjoying it in the pit garage anyway, Aston Martin, which is fantastic to see. And he's belting along now. It won't be long until he is on the back of Alexander Albon. Lance Stroll is still doing a belting job on these medium tyres. He came in lap 10, so he can probably get to lap 32 on these mediums, I would suggest. But I'm not liking the look of that Mercedes at the back, but I'm sure he can catch his at Lewis Hamilton, but... Seb defending well there. Meanwhile, Lance, we've not had a look at Lance for a little bit. What's Lance doing? Lance is in sort of a bit of Norman's one at the minute. He's decently enough in front of uh, in front of Albon, but he's he's not really making any inroads on Bottas. So it'll be interesting to see. But remember, Lance Stroll is on a different strategy here, so all is not lost as of yet. We'll go back to the map mode. There's Vettel. Latif is in for his first pit stop, so that's put him well out of sight. Sebastian not really making tons of inroads on the uh, on Albon at this moment, but he's just about to get in to DRS range, I would believe. So no does now come out in between them though, so that's going to prove a little bit of an issue. But 81% on these tyres, Seb, so he's doing a cracking job, this old lad, on these. Um, and we, might, we can also have a look. Lance Stroll's doing very well on his mediums as well. Lance Stroll's currently running in 14th at this moment in time. As Sebastian Vettel Martin with a great play there. has they overtaken Alexander Albon. It's good work. It's good work again. The RS open. The Aston Martin. And the Williams loses two places there for the Alpha Tauri and Sebastian Vettel. Now there is an opportunity for Sebastian Vettel to get after that Alpha Tauri. Of Mick Schumacher, and to be honest with you. If we do switch to Sebastian Vettel, he is attacking the Alpha Tower. Right. Push, push. In fact, he's already over to the Alpha Tower. He's now attacking um, he's now attacking Mick Schumacher. And he's got DRS. Mick Schumacher hasn't. Mick Schumacher defends. Right. Come on, Sebastian Vettel. He's Master vs. the Prentice here. Sonoda is also looking a bit ominous in the background, but. Get the overtake on, Seb. Get the overtake on. And the beauty of this as well... Is Lance Stroll is staying out of DRS range. Copy. If we can keep Lance Stroll out of DRS range of Mick Schumacher, which is what that we're all about, trying to get that little bit of DRS you, uh, ERS use, and Sebastian Vettel overtakes Mick Schumacher. The P15, great job, great job, Seb, great job. Looks like Aston Martin have just gained a race. We position. certainly have. And we're now going to get that to neutral. Can he defend? He can, he can defend. Yeah. 
He's got a job defending here, though. Come on, Seb. Don't think he's going to manage it. He isn't, but... Danny Ricardo has come out just in front of Lance Stroll. This is great action. Great action here, right. But Sebastian will get DRS. Sebastian will get DRS up this next straight, but so will Mick Schumacher, Lance Stroll. He's now struggling a little bit. Stay cool, man. You're doing a good job. You are doing a good job. Don't fight your teammate, though. That's beautiful. And defend if you can, Lance. Pass with an overtake. If he can hold that... Let's make sure we keep them behind. Okay. Yep, yeah, let's keep that Alpha Tower behind and let's let Sebastian do his thing. He has still got DRS on Stroll. We are on to lap 21. And we've probably got, what, another lap in it? I think if he stays in DRS, we'll leave him out, apart from that. If he keeps holding this Alpha Tower up, there is no panic. No panic at all. And he certainly is doing a cracking job for the team here. It's superb work from Seb as well, it really is. But he's done a cracking job here, Lance Stroll. Go on, lad. Go on, lad, defend. And he does, he's holding up. You must have known, Sebastian Bell has also got DRS again on Mick Schumacher. So, ever the chance for Seb to do some work here. And if we have a look at the tyre rate, Mick Schumacher's on cards. And he's got past Mick Schumacher. We might have to catch a replay of that because we didn't see that. I'm hoping we're going to get a replay, which we Let's are. Have a look. Let's have a look here. This was the Aston Martin. And it's that DRS again. And Sebastian Vettel, Master Overtakes Apprentice, you would say that Sebastian Vettel has got the measure of Mick Schumacher this afternoon. Superb work. Now he's got to try and keep him front, though. But my word, Lance Stroll is doing a fantastic job here. He's on 49%. He is starting to lose time. I think now would be the time to pull the trigger. Or would it? I think we've still got a bit of... We're still OK. We're still OK. Looks like Mick Schumacher's got Sebastian Mike, but that's fair enough. Still a lot to play for. This certainly is. This certainly is, Lance. Is that a new race position for Haas? Let's see for how long he can keep DRS. I think as soon as he falls out of that DRS of Sonoda, that's when we pull him in for his uh, for his pit stop. But at the moment, he's still staying within DRS range. In fact, he's doing more than that. He's attacking. Lance Stroll is attacking Yuki Sonoda. Although he's just fell back a little bit now. No, he's staying in it. He's staying in it. We're going to keep. We're going to stay with Lance Stroll on this occasion. So again, he's right up the back of Sonoda because Sonoda's not got that DRS. But look at that for a move. Can he get him? No, he can't. Unfortunate that we thought we got him there. Aston Martin with a great play there. They've moved up a place. But meanwhile, the the, uh, the third old battle between Mick Schumacher Martin. and Sebastian Vettel. It's been going on all evening here in Bahrain. And there we go again. Sebastian Vettel round the outside, round the outside. Gaining a position there. Superb work. And Danny Ricardo is not too far up the road. But Lance is now out of the. Um, DRS range. He is going to start to suffer a little bit now. That does make time. I think we give him possibly one more lap. We give him one more lap, I think, and that will uh, that will sort him out. Mick Schumacher's got past Vettel again. 
pit options, we will be going to the hard compound tyre as stated and we will pit this lap, box box. Pass with an overtake there. And this is just a ding dong battle and I don't think it's, um, it's not going to be easy for Seb, but he's doing all the business, he's pushing well. He's, uh, he's maintaining his tyres, which is really positive as well. Now, I don't know if Mick's going to go all the way to the end on those tyres. We're going to be putting on a fresh set of mediums, probably around lap 33, 34 maybe. Possibly a little bit later than that. So, Seb's got about another nine laps to go on these. As we switch back to Lance, who's in this lap, as we know, Lance is, uh, he's lost the RS. But, the most important thing also, he's looking behind him. He's got Hamilton, Albon and Latifi behind him, which is decent. I'm guessing that's another overtake for Sebastian Vettel, who's back up into P14. We knew we were going to be building our team around this man, and we certainly are doing that this Looks moment like in time. Aston Martin have just gained a race position. Let's have a look. Take a look now. Taking a look again. It's same again, it DRS. It's just a it's just a cracking battle between these two. A lot of respect shown. No uh, no tire banging, no uh, no dark hearts. It's been fantastic to watch. And it's great to see Sebastian Vettel doing so so well. On the medium compound tire, which like I say, he's got enough one to do. Stroll will be coming in short, we're gonna keep his eye on him as he comes around this final bend. And he, this is his one and only stop this afternoon, so Lance Stroll coming in now for his pit stop. Let's hope it's a good one, because he's done a cracking job so far this afternoon as Lance Stroll, and we're very impressed with him. I know, like I say, a few people have wrote him off in their saves, but we're giving the man a chance. He's only 23. Let's stick with him. And that will bring him out, I'm assuming in front of Albon and two Williams, it certainly has, so. Lance Stroll now is on these hard tyres to the end, and he might have to do a bit of defending, but uh, I don't think that should be too much of a problem, and they've still got another stop to make as well. Oh, we have kept it respectful all the way around. Take advantage and, and to be fair, we can have no complaints. But I still fancy Seb to get a really positive result here. All okay on fuel, so you can do what you want for speed. Copy. Right, so Seb's back onto normal fuel now instead of pushing, so he's just going to manage that a little bit more than what he has been doing this afternoon so far. But Seb. Managed to overtake Mick Schumacher again. We're not going to be, uh, we're not going to watch the replay, Aston but what Martin is more interesting, they've moved up a place. What is more interesting is a little bit more, and he could be looking at attacking Danny Ricardo. I think he's got half a chance here. If we have a look at um, Danny Ricardo's on brand new mediums, what's well, a brand new, but not too more mediums, and as he clicked. He's pit once. Now I'm wondering what is he, I'm guessing he's going to go on to another, another set of softs towards the end of the race. But Seb is certainly lapping on the base, it's great to see. I think we can fast forward a little bit now. Like I say, he's in that little battle with Mick Schumacher. They're just going to keep interchanging. And there's an overtake from Williams. Interesting. Let's take a look at the replay. Now watch this. Here's the moments involving Albon. Lance Stroll has been overtaken by one Williams. And there they go, moving up a position in the pack. And then I don't think too much later. The team are really disappointed. We with are that. disappointed with Let's that. Let's hope it doesn't set them back too badly. And then looking at it, it oh, he's managed to get back past the Tifi, so that's fair enough. We might Let's as well watch his, uh, his overtake on the Tifi. It's Lance Stroll. 
And it's just DRS down that main straight. Like I said, they've got to pit again. Lance Strolland, they're going to lose 20 seconds on him. It's not... It's not a big deal, this Lance. We've got the Williams cars covered off this afternoon. That's the main thing in terms of our uh, our objectives this afternoon. And that's perked him up a little bit in our garage as well, which is all positive. So we're expecting those two to pit. We want to be looking, I reckon, about lap 33 for our next pit stop. And a new position just gained by Williams. What on earth is Lance Stroll doing? He's just overtook two of them. He's having such a ding dong battle at the back here. I think we're gonna we're gonna go live to Lance Stroll because he's having a tough old time back here. He's on the half compound tire now. What's happening with these two on mediums? They've got to pit again. And he's lost another position, has he? The more worrying thing about this is Albon seems to be disappearing up the road while all this is going on. Right, Lance, let's uh, start doing some business, shall we? No saving required. Yeah. Use energy. Yeah. So can Lance Stroll get back at these two? I think he will. I don't think that's going to be a major issue for him. What is interesting is also Vettel's still sticking in DRS despite his tyres being practically knackered now. So that's something to also keep an eye on. Good job. Right, strong. Bike fast and safe. Have just gained a race position. We watched that live, so we're not going to watch the replay again. Vettel again. Really up behind Mike, Mick Schumacher. The RS up and can get him on this straight. Goes to the outside. Mick defends well. And still Sebastian Vettel. This still going to change in places time after time, yeah? It's such a ding dong battle, it's so much better racing from us here. And Sebastian Vettel is doing fantastic work. They both are. I'm chuffed with both drivers today. I know we're battling for P15 and P17 respectively, but we're working very hard. And you've got to be impressed with both drivers. Like I said, we've got a lot of changes and upgrades to make to this team. Can you go for a move here, Seb? Looking to the outside again, his tyres are cooked on 40%. But he's still sticking with it. And he's round like Schumacher. Superb work again. Aston Martin with a great play there. Absolutely. Place. It's a shame. It's such a shame he's got to have another pit stop because he's been fantastic throughout. He's still on neutral, so that's all fine. And while we've been watching that, we've uh, not actually been looking at Lance Stroll, but who has trained his DRS, uh, his ERS, sorry. So it is very difficult to keep an eye on both drivers. We're going to get said. Could he stretch these mediums onto socks? What would the sock tyre give us? That's a new race position for Haas. I think that's it. I think... Yeah, I think that's it. Pit window. Let's get him on a set of new medium tyres. Right, Seb's got to come in this lap. Coleman, you're doing a good job. Yep, you are Lance, you are Lance. He's, he's harvesting a bit more ERS, which is, fanta uh, which is fantastic. And he can go back onto neutral now, that's fine. He's done okay there, he's done okay Lance. Like I say, I'm not concerned about that. I reckon we've got Williams covered with our uh, one-stop strategy. Save fuel. So I think that's all good. And as we go back to Vettel, 
he's sort of lost sight to make sure back in there, so we'll switch back to bat mode. As Vettel is in for his pit stop and he comes out, he's still in front of Albon, which is fine. So he's down to 17. Latifi's locked up, which has really put him at the back now compared to Stroll. And there has been an incident at Sector 3. Yellow flag. Looks like there's been a lockup. Guan Yu Zhou. Let's see what happened. We'll then. have a little look at Let's this. Let's take another look. There we have Joe. Well, oh, they've lost it. They've locked up. Oh, and he's run majorly wide. Which has knocked him down the order somewhat. Right. So the interesting things here is Sebastian Vettel is now on fresh and medium tyres. He's done two stops. And he's on his, his pit schedules complete, so that's all looking rather fine and dandy for our man Seb Vettel. Hamilton's only done one stop, as it's an order. These guys have all got to pit in front of him. Now, looking at it, there is a chance to get back up to 15. Depending on how he can go on with these mediums. As we know, Albon's got to pit again. So, Stroll should be 18. We're, we're pretty aware of that. Stroll should be 18. And that should be about it. I think we've got 15, 16 for, for Seb and then 18 for, for Stroll. I think that's about where we are at this moment in time. So, if we... Uh, all the pit strategies are complete now, so we might as well move it on a little bit. Stroll's maintaining that gap to Albon pretty good. And Seb's gone off. Which won't have helped him. That's dropped him to 20 seconds. That's a lock -up? That might the replay. That may be P15 gone. It involves Sebastian Vettel. It's a lock -up. Yeah, he's gone and that not could be massively wide, but wide enough to cause him send lost a few seconds, probably about three or four seconds he's lost there. Stroll's sort of in his own race at the minute. He's just waiting for Albon to pay. Sonoda's locked up though. That's brought us back into play. That has brought us back into play. It's going to be a tough old finish. It's going to be close between Sonoda and Vettel. And like I say, if Hamilton pits as well, but Hamilton is in a Mercedes, we've got to bear that in mind. So we shall go back to the map view and fast forward a little bit. We're looking all right on tyre wear. I think we're looking pretty good here. Latifi's in the pit, so that's Latifi done and dusted for the afternoon. Verstappen, a few of the front, front runners are starting to come in as well. And some pit stops are now starting to happen. Albon's like in. Locked up. Perez is locked up into turn 10. Let's have a we look. We haven't really had a look at the front runners. This might so be a good time to have a this. quick look. There's Sergio Perez. Perez attacking Hamilton. Uh, attacking uh, Verstappen, sorry. And runs wide. Don't want you guys fighting Red Bull. Right. Now this is interesting because Sonoda's just pit with 1.6 seconds. Right, let's go. Use energy if you need it. Use energy. Hammer time, Seb. Yeah, you can stop lift and coast. Yeah. Can we catch up to the back of Yuki Soda, although he's on fresh soft tyres, I think that's probably going to be done and dusted for us. We may pip in front of Hamilton. But we're not going to catch Sonoda on soft until the end, possibly, but by that time he's probably going to be out of sight. So Sebastian, we are all okay on fuel, all okay on fuel, so you can do what you want for speed. And Mick Schumacher now is going to be 
coming in. Where's that going to bring him at? Looks like there's been a lockup. Leclerc's locked up into turn 13. Let's we might as well look at look. Charles Leclerc. Watch this. There's Leclerc. Oh, and he's off as well. Up, but that could have been much worse. There's been a few lockups and mistakes, which is uh, it's nice to see the AI making these mistakes and errors. Mick Schumacher's come out. Where has he come out? He's still in the pits. And he's come out comfortably in front of Sonoda. And I think 17th and 18th looks like the maximum that we are going to extract from this race today. We'll, uh, we'll move it on now. Yeah, I think it's definitely. It's the most we can extract. I think we've uh, we've not done too badly. It's the split strategy, it must be said, it looks like the uh, the two stop was the better strategy. However, something major has just happened. Hamilton's coming again. And now we could finish in front of a Mercedes. Wow. Right, we might have to manage this. Push. What is Hamilton on? Hamilton's on medium tyres as well. Sebastian Vettel up against Lewis Hamilton. Who thought we would see this on the first episode? As we look from Lewis Hamilton's point of view, chasing down Sebastian Vettel, he's within DRS now. I don't know if there's anything much we can do about this. That lap car's gonna help. And that lap car, the fact that he's just lapped Lewis Hamilton may help us massively here. If we go back to Vettel's point, point of view, and just keep looking at that back wing. Lance Stroll's comfortable. Lance Stroll's totally comfortable. He's had to let him go. Don't let Lewis go. Oh dear, Seb. He's got blue flag. He's had to let um, he's had to let Verstappen go. And unfortunately, Hamilton's followed him through. And by the it's time he's position gained for Mercedes. By the time he's got going again, it will really game over for Seb. He's 1.7, he's out of DRS, and that really is now the maximum that we can hope to achieve from this race. I think possibly we'll Lance Stroll just conserve his tyres a little bit. Um, and can we tell him to... Can we tell him to avoid the kerbs, or...? Yep, got you, Lance. Got you. Let's. Copy. How many laps am I going to get on these? You've only got one more, Lance. You've only got one more. So, bearing that in mind, we will go back to Seb's point of view. Three more laps. Three more laps. And let's have a look. So, we might as well cut to the front. We have got Max Verstappen leading the Bahrain Grand Prix from Ferrari. They both out of the RS range. But it looks like it's going to be Max Verstappen as we'll cut onto the final lap. Max Verstappen, final lap of the race. Two Ferraris following Mutt Perez. It's pretty practically done and dusted here. Yeah. It's totally done and dusted. Push a bit more. Copy. As Max Verstappen comes round the final few corners, he's got he's had the measure of Ferrari all afternoon. No lockups, no daft mistakes. And unless his uh, power unit fails like he did in real life, we should be all right with Max Verstappen. Meanwhile, at the back of the grid, Latif is very much living a lonely race at the bike. Albon is in a bit of traffic. Last lap. But our two guys, Sebastian and. 
lands above them. Okay, 17th and 18th. We thought that was the maximum possibly that we could get. We did look like we were in for 15th at one moment in time. But sadly not. Signs adds did get a bit of DRS, maybe. But Verstappen's got him covered. Leclerc has got fastest lap of the Grand Prix, which is interesting. And as Max Verstappen comes round, one more corner to go for Max. He has got an Alfa Romeo in front of him. But I don't think Sainz has got enough unless he goes for a crazy dive on which he has. And Max Verstappen rounds the final corner and will win the first race of F1 Manager 22 for us of the 22 season. Red Bull will be very chuffed with that. A decent performance from Ferrari as well. A very decent performance from Ferrari, finishing second and third. Perez comes in in fourth, Russell in fifth, Bottas sixth, Gasly seventh, line, I believe. And then our guys have more than had the measure of the two at the back. We're not the worst team on the grid, we're very much the second worst team. We're very much the second worst team. And that's it, ladies and gents. First Grand Prix Sebastian dealt with. with a comfortable result for his team here. He's not overly chuffed with that, as you can expect. Former world champion, don't want to be running 17, 18. Had he had a decent ding dong with Mick Schumacher. There's still some margin for improvement here. There's no rest for F1 team. Let's hope their hard work to get them closer to exceeding expectations in the next race. With the race wrapped up, the team is ranked in ninth in the constructor standing. The teams now look ahead to the next round, where they'll duel it out in the sand dunes of Saudi Arabia. And there we have it, people. So, as we said, Max Verstappen winning, and our guys 17th and 18th. He don't make pretty reading, but it is only the first race. We've got some performance points, some experience gained, especially for Lance Stroll, which is good. And now it is all no driver bonuses. We didn't get any bonuses in the contract for 17th and 18th. So now we go to Saudi Arabia and we will have a look at the upgrades and everything in the next episode. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the first one of this series. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.